الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم النبيين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين At the early beginning, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And I hope, I hope you are enjoying this beautiful weather and uh, indeed that beautiful and nice uh, gathering as well. Uh, today we are getting together to just share some insights uh, about uh, the essential ingredients for a content uh, life. All of us uh, are after a happy life, a content one. Every single human is after a happy life. And indeed, as Muslims, we are after the same thing. And today I will try to just uh, seek some guidance from the beautiful word of Allah, the Quran, and the tra tradition of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to highlight how can we gain this. So I'm going to share some of my thoughts with you, acknowledging that you already know a lot and you have already the experience which takes you closer and closer to uh, happiness and gets you closer to contentment. There is a very well-known saying about this man who said that I felt unhappy about having no shoes till I have met a man with no feet. Appreciation or gratitude is one of the secret words to lead us to a content life. Gratitude of what we have already, what we already have. Appreciation of what we already have in our life. And that would lead us to the pleasure of God. Acknowledging that we have a lot and thanking Allah for what, having what we have is one of the key elements for a content and a pleased life. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever blessings or bounty you have is from Allah, is from God. How many bounties do we have? How many gifts do we enjoy? If I now pause for a few minutes and ask you to just share with your neighbor the bounties and the blessings you are enjoying this morning, and then get back to you and carry on this. Can we do this? May I ask you to just talk to your neighbor right now. This is not a workshop indeed, but you know, it's a, I like that very casual setting. Talk to your neighbor about the beautiful bounties you have, you are enjoying this morning. And try to just count them. Try to count them for me. And then I will just try to hear from you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So now uh, I, I have just uh, noticed that every, er, most of the people were interacting with the rest, talking about uh, how many gifts they have woke up to enjoy in the morning. And let me just share some which I have had with my neighbor and his as well. Uh, I told him that I was able to get up in the morning and he said the same thing. Ma many people would sleep but they won't be able to get back to life. This is a big gift that I have had a chance to live another day. I had my prayer in the morning and I had a breakfast. Many people in this very morning had no, nothing to eat. They're still enjoying some other gifts, by the way. But I was very lucky to be able to find some food to eat. I actually, I, I didn't worry at all in the last night about my breakfast in the morning. I had it already in the fridge. That was a big one, a big gift from Allah. I came here by my car. While coming, I saw many of you coming walking. Compared to them, as I see it, I am in enjoying a gift. But those who came walking, they're still enjoying the gift of being able to come walking. And they might even benefit more than me. The Haji said that he, when, when he walked, he was able to get off the bed. This is a gift. Going to the mosque, praying Fajr, another one. 
coming to this beautiful gathering with those beautiful people is another gift. But I wasn't able to count all the bounties, nor him. How about you? Can we hear from a brother and a sister? And then I'll carry on with you. I would like to just uh, go ahead and share with uh, us some of the gifts he and his neighbor enjoyed in the morning. Yes, please. I was shoveling on the road and I was a bit lost and I couldn't find my way. So it's amazing how Allah inspired us to create technologies. And example, the GPS, uh, how I got here. So I'm Alhamdulillah, here. welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So the GPS you have classified as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leading. Alhamdulillah, I used it in the morning for another meeting and I, I was lost anyway. Because <laughs> of the new layout of the road. It is a gift. Sometimes we don't tend to think about the gifts and the favors and the bounties. We think about what we're missing. Sisters? Yes, please. I was thinking that we wake up on belief. Wake up in? On belief. On belief. Yes. Faithful. Waking up, having your faith in your heart, getting you to walk around and act in accordance to the teaching of Allah and His Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is one of the greatest gifts we ever enjoy. How about your neighbor? <laughs> Sorry? Be, being healthy is another gift the sister is saying. How many people are sick and cannot come to our place today? But guess what? Even they are sick, they're still enjoying other pleasures and bounties of God. So we look at them and say that, oh, sad. They are not enjoying that gathering we're having right now. But they might say, oh, sad. They don't know actually. They don't value, those guys might not be able to value what we're valuing now of the gifts of God as we are reflecting and contemplating why it's sick over how many gifts we never thank God for. And now it's time to thank Him. Being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of His bounties enable us to gain the pleasure of God. And Allah says that if we thank Him for whatever good he has given us, he would increase us in that good. But if we turn away and become ungrateful, Allah is saying punishment is going to be there. And when punishment is mentioned, we might think about the punishment of the day of judgment, the other life. But guess what? In this life, there is a punishment. The punishment that we don't value the bounties we have if we have a lot of values uh, bounties and favors and we don't actually value them this is a punishment in itself if we don't know and we don't value the beautiful things we have in our life we are already punished because we are going to replace gratitude with grumpiness we would always think about the, the other empty part of the glass, not the full one. We would think about the things we are missing in our life. And that would keep us grumpy all the time. Grumpy, when we wake up, deal with people, act in our workplace or where we study, and with our own families. Being grateful to Allah would lead us to a better life, indeed a better life. But we need to be grateful to the people as well, not to Allah. So when I say gratitude, I mean being grateful to even human beings. Being grateful to those who are nice to you. And that's why we are taught by Sayyidina Muhammad 
when somebody does something good to you, say to them, Jazakallahu khayran. May Allah reward you. Thank you. This is an Islamic customs. It is an Islamic custom to say thank you to somebody who is doing something good to you. And the question is, do you really value people who value you? How many people in your life do value you? Do you value them back? If you do, then you're actually doing something which is going to get you closer to a content life, to a happy life. One of the issues which make us unable to be content is comparing ourselves to others in a negative way. Stop comparing yourselves to others. That doesn't mean that you become lazy and not to work very hard in life to be the best. No. Please don't get me wrong. But the point here is to stop comparing yourself to others in a negative way. In the matter of worldly gains, always compare yourself to those who are less than you, less fortunate that, than you. In the matters of Akhirah, the day of judgment, the other life, compare yourself to, to those who are better than you. So now, don't compare to somebody who has got a, a better house than yours. Because you are going to end up feeling bad and grumpy. You don't have the same house with the same high t uh, uh, IT stuff in and things built in. Don't compare yourself to somebody who has got a car better than yours. Because you are going to end up undervalue the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So stop comparing yourself to other people around you in a negative way. Focus on comparing yourself to this guy who is very active in learning the Quran, living in accordance to the Quran, giving back to the community. This sister who is giving back to the community, being active in her life, moving around, keeping fit, doing her chores and tasks towards Allah, her family and the community. Be jealous in a nice way, jealous. And try to compare them to you. By doing so, you are gaining a content life. You are getting closer to the meaning of being happy and content. Be still, the second advice. You know, everything is moving around us. In this very digital age, everything is moving. We might be sitting, we might be sitting while we are checking our iPhones and other electronic devices. But our thoughts are not sitting, are not still. They are moving everywhere. And that causes us to be a bit away from, from contentment and from happiness. Because we are not... We are not still in our ideas, our thoughts. We don't have those peaceful moments. And that's why one of the very important things of the Islamic practice is to have time where you have dhikr. This is a sunnah way. In the morning you need to have dhikr. In the evening you need to have dhikr. Have you had your dhikr in the morning after your prayer? Are you going to have your 10 minutes dhikr after Maghrib prayer? What do you say in that? Do you do it by yourself or with your family? One of the secrets way to get us that content life is to enjoy the spiritual life and the spiritual growth with our own family. Let me suggest, let me suggest that you pray with your family at least once every day. Let's say Maghrib. You did the prayer. Kids under under seven years, don't ask them to come and pray. As long as there is somebody else taking care of them. Otherwise, they cause a, tr a big problem in the house, you know. Don't ask them. But the older ones, ask them to get ready. 
have the hijab on boys get ready dress right get ready pray maghrib together and after you finish go to the athkar loudly with the family to teach everybody make sure that everybody knows you can do this loudly to teach astaghfirullah 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 and you need to know what you say and the meaning of what you say and you teach to your to the kids around you to your friends allahumma anta salam oh allah you are the peace one وَمِنْكَ السَّلَامِ From you is peace. تَبَارَكْتَ وَتَعَلَيْتَ يَا ذَا الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ All glory is to you and praise. Say it from the bottom of your heart. Appreciate what Allah has given you. Remember that Sayyidina Muhammad said to Sayyidina Mu'adh after he held his hand and he said to him, Mu'adh, I love you. I love you in Allah's sake, twice. So don't forget to say after every prayer, اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك. Oh Allah, help me to mention your name, to praise you, to worship you in the best way. Appreciate that moment. Recite together. الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم. آية الكرسي. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Together. قل هو الله أحد. You recite this with your family. الله الصمد. You go. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق كاري أون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس اللهم أجرنا من النار أو oh الله protect us from the hell fire اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار when you do this and you go on and say سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله all glory be to Allah. Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. Discipline, 33 times. It's about discipline. It's about thanking Allah. It's about glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You finish. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, together. Make salah on Sayyidina Muhammad. Sunnah. Grateful to him, thankful to him, to Allah that he sent him to us to guide us. I think those moments are very important to have every day. If you don't have those moments in your life, you are missing a lot. Have your family together and do this every day. After Salat, 10 minutes after Salatul Maghrib, but it's a very important 10 minutes. Don't miss it. Every time is hopefully is home after Maghrib time or about Maghrib time, especially in this very long summer. Another, another uh, secret to a content life is to value those who value you. Thank you, as I said. You know, when you send somebody a card and say thank you, when we get our volunteers together for a dinner, it's not about the dinner. It's about saying, thank you. You're giving back to this community. You're making things, things happening in a positive way. So thank you. Keep it up. People who love you, who are around you, from time to time need that word, thank you. Value them. Another secret is that we shouldn't put money ahead of happiness. Thinking that money is going to lead us to a content life. Wrong. You can have a content life regardless to your, regardless to the money you have sitting in your bank or the social position you have or other things in your life. Right? Yes, you can. You can, you can have a content life with whatever money you have. Don't think that you are not content because you don't have enough money to travel overseas and have fun. When you came here, it's for free. Have we paid it to just hire this place? Alhamdulillah. No. You, we didn't pay anything. You can still enjoy things in life without paying. 
And this is one of the things which would, would actually make us able to be content. You know, sometimes when we go and shop, we buy things which we actually don't need. Or we buy a lot of junk, which we can give up. And I think this is very important practice to get us, us closer to happiness, to cut down our expense expense expenditure which we, we spend actually for useless stuff we don't need to buy everything buying a lot of clothes is not going to bring any happiness to us you bring what you need i'm not suggesting to look not to look smart in your clothes or dress don't get me wrong i do and i like to be like this but what i'm saying is that don't buy something you don't need because that shows that you are ungrateful to Allah's gifts. In the morning, I had a meeting with a businessman who, who have millions of dollars. Millions. And he was sharing with me and other brothers and sisters some of the experiences. And he said that he doesn't believe that the money he has is his. And that's why he doesn't keep any money in his bank account except to pay his employees. But the rest of the money is in the market to help other families to work and be able to share the same happiness, feed their family. And whatever money he gets at the end of the year, he pays off the charity and sadaqah, zakat and sadaqah. And he enjoys his life that way. Wallahi, if you look at his car, you might say that this guy is... Come on, you're telling me he has got millions of dollars? He just bought a new car, by the way. It's a, an amazing one. To me, it is. Well, which might cost him like 70, 70 grand. But again, before, until very short, very close time, he used to have a very old car, which I have seen it with him. Never thought that this guy is a millionaire. I thought that I am more rich than him. But that contentment he had, not because he was rich, because of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because he thought about other people. Another secret, do you help other people around yourself? Do you make other people happy? One of the amazing, beautiful ways to gain contentment and happiness is to make somebody happy. Do you do, do you do actually this? Sayyidina Muhammad advised us to smile at the face of the people. And he told us that this is a charity. Why would smiling at you become an Islamic culture? Why? There is a research indicates or suggests that every one of us needs to smile at least 12 times a day to be happy. Nobody is smiling except for you. Smile for no reason. You look at the one next to you and smile or you hug them would actually make you feel, feel more content. May you do this for me? Give them a hug. I'm Abu Nasr, I can't move. This is all going to be broken. Give me a hug. Give me a How do you feel after this? It is a very small and tiny thing. It is quite small and tiny thing. You haven't done a lot. Just turn the loud, turn the around, give somebody a hug and smile in their face. But how do you feel? We don't need to do a lot to be happy. But rather we need to feel what we do and enjoy it. We need to enjoy the moment and stop thinking about the future. Something my wife always suggests me to do is to stop worried 
to stop being worried about the future. I am not claiming that I know all the secrets to happiness. I am only sharing some of the keys I know with you. Who knows, maybe some of you are ought to be in my place and teach us. But I'm only sharing some thoughts. Sayyidina Muhammad didn't have a lot, a lot of money. Many of the great leaders in the world didn't have a lot of money when they died. But they have enjoyed happiness. And they were a able to create a happy community. Be among those people. Don't live only for yourself. Think about other people around you and live for them. Give back. Don't be miser in your emotions before your money. And that's why Sayyidina Muhammad taught us to smile. Because if we are generous in our positive emotions, we would indeed be generous when it comes to spending money. A person who is miser and is stingy in his own emotions, in his, in his own emotions, most likely he's going to be stingy in terms of money. And other way around. Somebody is very miser in sharing money, paying zakat. Believe me, he would think many times before he says to his wife, I love you. Because he lives only for himself. He lives only for himself. He doesn't think too much about people around him. To gain happiness, we need to think about others. We need to be collective in our things, not think in, in individually. Rather, think collectively. Think in a way that get us, us closer to Allah. And this is one of the secrets why we read every day in the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, and we call upon God to guide us to the right path, not guide rather than guide me. The Quran says, what do you recite? Ihdina sirat al mustaqim Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path. That would make sense when you pray with me and everybody else. But when you pray at home and say that, what does that mean? It means that you're still thinking about the wider community while praying to Allah. It means that you care about them. And it means that Allah wants you to care about them. Let me summarize. Be grateful to Allah. Try to, when you are in a difficult situation and a hardship, it's not a punishment. It's a time for you to get closer to Allah and be patient. It's a time for your spiritual growth if you are successful in the test. Be grateful to Allah by appreciating what you have, not what you don't have. Don't be sad if you don't have a shoe because other people, some other people have no legs, have no feet. Appreciate what you have. Be grateful to Allah. Second thing is stop comparing yourself to others in a negative way. You are whom you are. Try to be the best. Work very hard and work smart. But don't compare yourself in a, in a negative way to other people. When it comes to money, don't compare yourself to somebody who is a millionaire and you barely have enough money for a week. Compare yourself to somebody who doesn't have money for a day. Compare somebody, compare yourself to somebody who doesn't have a meal. While you have a meal, you have a house, you have a beautiful wife or beautiful husband, you have a spouse, you have kids. All everybody's healthy and nice. You having some trouble at your work? Welcome to the club. 
Where you study? Well, everybody does. Who doesn't? Don't think that you are the only one who is suffering in humanity. Be aware that this is something normal. Normalize the hardship. Number three, be still. Have your moments with yourself. Focus on the dhikr. Know what you say. Get closer to Allah. Get closer to Allah. When you say the remembrance words, Adhkar, say it from the bottom of your heart. Say it with the art of feeling them when they come out of your mouth. And say them every day in the morning and the evening. Don't miss that. It is the food for your soul. How many of you missed yesterday three meals? All of them. Put your hand up, please. Okay, missed one, uh, two meals. Oh, two meals. Only one, maybe fasting, mashallah. Like one meal. Maybe many people. I don't have, in most cases, I don't have dinner. I'm already overweight. <laughs> Only three kg, brother. <laughs> Welcome to the club. So everybody had at least one meal yesterday. Think about that. Number four, don't put your money ahead of happiness. You're going to be content whether you have money or don't. Whether you have a very high social position or not. Number five, Give back, value those who value you. Without some volunteers, we will never be able to just meet together in this beautiful gathering. It might sound very easy, but it's not. At the end, thank you very much for listening. And I ask Allah to give you a very happy and content life for you and your families. May Allah bless you. Maybe to be continued later on and talk about love as a key to be in content. Shukran, thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I don't know what is the next, if you'd like to raise some question uh, in regards to, I mean, like uh, in, in the same topic or related to the same topic, I'm more than happy to take them or only or even uh, comment. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, salam. Salam. What is the connection, if any, between happiness and having ambitions and goals that you are striving towards? Okay. What is the connection between happiness and ambitious and goals to achieve in life? When you fail in achieving them, you won't feel uh, miserable. You would learn from the failure to be successful. But you will keep trying. Because one of the qualities of the believers in the Quran that they never give up. They never give up. This is what it came to my mind just straight ahead. That when you fall down, when you fall down and you feel that there is nobody there to help you, remember that, remember that Allah is there to help you. And that you can stand up on your feet and carry on. Don't think that it's the end of the world. If you lose your job, inshallah it's not the end of the world. Carry on. If you're not able to get what you want, Reanalyze, reanalyze your situation, why that is happening in my life. Don't make that influence you in a negative way and make you think that I am a failure. Keep working hard to make your positive goals come true in your life. Don't allow failure to make you feel bad and miserable. I hope that this helps in answering your question.
Assalamualaikum. Uh, my question is, some people, most probably myself included, uh, think to be grateful is an excuse to be complacent. Can, can you share your thoughts on that? Can you expand more? Uh, some people, including myself, will say that, oh, that's, that's enough. I, I wouldn't want to do more than that. That's being complacent. They don't want to be the best. They don't care about being the best. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, it's a choice. But again, don't cry. Don't cry out when you are not able to even provide for the basic things in your life because of that laziness. In Islam, in the Islamic history, when you read that the one who conquered the Pakistani area was only 16 years old, the Pakistani brothers and sisters Mim, just kept his as a way of appreciation to him, had his name on one of the train, train stages in Karachi. His name was Muhammad. You would know that you cannot achieve good things in life without being active and trying your best. But again, it's a choice. And if you make a decision, you need to be able to know that you are going to be responsible for that decision. Don't blame God. Blame yourself. 